Hello everyone and welcome to my channel Some Sugar Some Spice. This is Sydney and today I will be helping you in planning your next Egypt trip. But first, let me show you how beautiful Egypt is. begin with this video let me tell you what all we will be talking about here first is why egypt why you should decide egypt as a travel destination second i will help you in plan your complete itinerary visa details accommodation everything and third and most important is how safe egypt is and our own experience with the same let's talk about our first topic which is why egypt I can give you five reasons why you should travel to Egypt. Number 1, rich Egyptian history with mummies, tombs, Egyptian temples, and there is a lot of history related to Roman Catholics which give you a complete European vibes in the capital city Cairo. Second reason is Egypt has its coast on the Red Sea, which is considered as world's most famous site for scuba diving and snorkeling because of its rich marine life. Third reason is Egypt is cheaper than traveling to any European country. Fourth reason, if you want to experience the majestic Nile, then you should definitely go to Egypt. Fifth and last reason is if you are someone who is traveling from India or the Indian subcontinent or even from UAE or Middle Eastern countries, the flight is going to be cheaper as well as of short duration for you. From Dubai, the flight is only around three hours to Egypt. So these are my five reasons because of which you should definitely travel to Egypt. Let's move on to second topic which is planning your Egypt trip. Now when we come to plan on any of our trip the most important step is finalizing your itinerary and finalizing your cities from a country. For Egypt I can tell you the cities which you can include are Cairo, Luxor, Aswan, Alexandria, Sharm El Sheikh and Hurghada. Now we travel to three of these cities which were Cairo, Luxor and Sharm El Sheikh. We divided two days for Cairo, two days for Luxor and three days for Sharm El Sheikh. Now what is the difference between these cities? If you talk about Cairo, Luxor, Alexandria and Aswan, these cities will cover the complete history as well as the Nile River. So if you are someone who is looking to explore more on history and Nile River, you can choose any two of these cities. Now the remaining cities which are Sharm El Sheikh and Hurghada are famous for their sea beaches and their sea coast so you can choose any one of these and then you can plan your itinerary if you need any help in finalizing your cities or how many days you want to explore there you can ask me in the comment section and i will reply them sooner to you now what all places you should be going to in all these cities or specifically in cairo luxor and sharm el sheikh i will be coming up with further videos in the next coming weeks and i will put the link in the description box or in the i button somewhere here Now the second most important part comes in planning your any trip or itinerary is your visa. So for Egypt there are two ways in which you can get your visa. Recently Egypt government has started e-visa facilities for few selected countries. Now you can check the eligibility for your country from the Egypt website which I will link in the description below. Now for us Indians we have both the options. We can get e-visa from the portal or we can get the usual sticker visa through an agent through the uh, Egyptian embassy from the consulate. Now uh, we reached out to so many agents in India asking for e-visa but they all gave us a long list of documents to apply even for the e-visa that this was your cover letter your company leave letter bank balance and so many other things but when i personally looked through the egypt portal i realized that they did not ask any for such documents they only needed passport and your passport size photograph but the only thing i found which we could not provide is the host detail so this host should be any authorized agency or tour agency from egypt and there should be someone available for you at the immigration to get you the immigration clearance and welcome you at the airport or they should provide you a guarantee letter which you can show at the immigration at the airport and then you can go through it 
Now, if you don't have these course details or you don't have the guarantee letter which you can provide, then my suggestion would be to go for the sticker visa. But for this whole purpose of applying for e visa, we booked our trip. We booked a tour agent for us from Egypt, which was Ramasai Tours. Now, I cannot tell how seamless the whole process became for us when we finalized them. They gave us the host details, and after applying for my Egypt e visa, we got our visas in only two days. Now, this is not a sponsoring for any tour agency or something, but yes, I really appreciate. how they made the complete process seamless for us their person came at the airport to pick us up and then he helped us with the immigration and since my husband is also a huge history buff so he wanted a tour guide for the places in cairo and luxor for 4 days where he could get deep details into all the history of egypt and not to forget the tour guide they provided us in cairo was an egyptologist with immense knowledge of complete history and all the places around so we were very happy with that but if you are someone who do not want to have a tour guide or do not want to spend on that particular part then i am going to help you to plan your complete trip without a tour guide but the only thing you have to take care is you have to apply for your visa through the embassy or if you get guarantee letter from someone without booking for complete tour then you can apply for the e visa if you have any other questions regarding the visa details or if you want the suggestions on the tour guide you can let me know in the comment section next we will talk about how do you travel to egypt and how do you travel within egypt for your intercity travels so for traveling to egypt we booked an emirates flight from dubai to cairo and i cannot tell this was our first time with the emirates and the flight was super amazing their infotainment system was very good it gives you all the overviews and the food which is given by emirates no other airlines i can i think can beat that so it's a, it was a direct 3 hour flight for us and we had a very super comfortable journey now when we talk about traveling within egypt then i can say the best option for intercity travels would be to book flights for one city to another and egypt air is the best airlines from which you can book flights for all the cities they have flights for all the cities cairo luxor aswan and all the other major cities and the cost of the flight is also average which is around 3 to 4k or 6k for one trip along with that you have some other options of intercity travels one is your nile cruises the intercity nile cruises which goes from cairo luxor aswan so you can choose among them if you have time because they take time and the other option would be some intercity trains but i feel that given the time taken and also the budget wise i somehow felt that flight was still the better option if you want to explore more places in less time now when we talk about the travel within the city then for your cabs and taxi services in cairo you have uber available so you don't have problem with traveling within uh, cairo but when it comes to other cities i think you should do your own research about the prices in the city and it's better to take help from your hotel concierge or your hotel staff while booking for a cab or looking for taxi services because egypt is still not yet very developed in terms of tourism so you should have some research done before you travel within the city apart from cairo when you can simply use uber and be easy with your travel and since we have had our tour guide tour agent with us all through the days ever every time in cairo and luxor so we did not have to book any taxi or anything so we did not face any problem with related to transportation thereafter next we will talk about the stay or accommodation options in egypt now when you are booking your hotels in cities historic cities like cairo luxor etc be very careful that whatever you are booking for is should be from a renowned group like how i can share from my own experience is we booked a hotel in cairo specifically in giza with a pyramids view and we booked with booking.com with a rating of 9 plus now when we reached at the hotel we realized that we got something entirely different so we booked a room which had a huge balcony with the pyramids view but when we reached the hotel we were shifted like we were moved checked into a room without the balcony and they did not even bother to tell us before or even when we were present during the check in they did not tell us that the room is without balcony but and when we asked them that why they have given this kind of room they said that the previous guest who was staying in the room with balcony they have not checked out yet and they have locked the room and they have not returned yet 
but they should have told this before and moreover on the next day there was no power in the hotel they said that the government has done some power cut and because of which they don't have power and there is no backup also in the hotel now this was enough for us the pyramids view was obviously the very good from that hotel from their terrace in the night we could see the complete light and sound show of the pyramids everything was good but the hotel the property and the location specifically the giza which is in the outskirts of the city was not that great so the next day we decided to check out and we moved into marriott mina house now marriott mina house is i think the only five star hotel in the giza area which is very near to pyramids you won't get full pyramids view from marriott mina house but you can get some partial views but also the breakfast where marriott mina house serves their breakfast that place is amazing and you can have some really good pyramid views while having your breakfast so if you feel that marriott is slightly higher for your budget and you still want pyramids view rooms then you can look for airbnbs or rooms uh, rooms on booking.com but please do your research beforehand but if you prefer that view is not the priority for you you want a good hotel you want good services then look for hotels in downtown cairo they have lot of who oh, five star or four star or three star hotels and you won't face any issues with that now secondly when we talk about hotels in luxor make sure that whatever hotel you are booking in luxor it comes with a nile view because that is the best thing you can get in that city and thirdly when it comes to hotels in sharm el sheikh so there are many hotels who have private beaches which have private beaches in sharm el sheikh and they they can offer you direct access points to the location where you can do your own snorkeling or scuba diving so you don't have to go anywhere else so we stayed in rixos and that was simply an amazing hotel i will be coming up with all my hotel detail videos in the coming weeks and i will put the link in the description box below or in the i button above so make sure that you subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss on on any upload so coming back to our topic in sharm el sheikh we stayed in rixos as well as royal savoy now there was reason to split our stay between these two hotels is first is uh, we stayed in rixos because it is such a great property with very good access point to snorkeling and they have very good packages which i will be covering up in my videos and secondly we stayed in royal savoy because it is located at the heart of sharm el sheikh which is soho square and soho square is also one place which you should not miss in sharm el sheikh for which i will be coming up in details in my other video Next point in planning your trip I want to cover here is the currency in Egypt. So the Egyptian currency is Egyptian pounds but the places in Egypt accept both Egyptian pounds as well as US dollars. So I would recommend if you have a forex card load that with some US dollars so that you can get it exchanged later on or make your online payments from the US dollars but also make sure you have some cash with you in USD as well as in Egyptian pounds because when you go and buy something locally the local vendors would require you to give cash and that to in Egyptian pounds so if you have USD you can easily get it exchanged there and if you have EGP there won't be any problem in it for all the hotels and all the property payments you can make through your cards you can use your international credit or debit cards and make the payments in us dollars so there won't be any problem with that next i would want to talk about and this is my last point in complete planning of your egypt trip is the dress culture dress code now egypt is an arabic country it's a muslim country so i won't say there are any there are not any restrictions on the dress code there especially for females you can wear whatever you want with all the freedom but since it's an arabic country and a muslim country you should be careful in what you are wearing i would say dress modestly dress smartly and that would be your go to thing so you should be actually be careful in the cities historic cities like cairo luxor aswan where you can you should wear modest but when you are going to beach cities like sharm el sheikh where i have personally been and i had seen people there since that is mostly a vacation place for europeans and russians so there you can wear like whatever you feel comfortable in i think these were pretty much the points which i wanted to cover in planning your trip if you feel i have missed any point which is important for planning your egypt trip or if you have any questions regarding the complete planning of egypt itinerary you can ask me in the comment section i will reply to them as soon as possible 
Now let's talk about the last important topic for today which is about the safety of Egypt. Now as me as like us many of you would also have seen so many videos on YouTube filled on the concerns about safety in Egypt, people being scammed, people being tricked. I would say to some extent it can be true but it's not fully true I would say because uh, we have been there personally the people in egypt are absolutely so humble so polite they are good no one is going to harm you in any way like we have been to egypt for 7 days the only thing which can happen is people would want to extract money from you because egypt is still a lower middle income developing nation so their tourism is not yet developed so they would find ways to get some more money or they can lie to you in some cases as i think what happened with us in case of that cairo giza hotel so that is the only thing now talking about all these concerns i want to talk how you can safeguard yourself or how you can avoid all these things happening from you personally for us since we were with our tour guide all the time in luxor and cairo so we did not had to face any such issue but even then when we were getting clicked our pictures in luxor in one of the temple there was a security guard there and he came to us and he offered himself to click our pictures we obliged and we said okay we gave our camera to him and he started clicking pictures for us he really did a good job in that but after that as soon as the pictures were clicked he was asking money for us for his service and for the tip so that is the only thing which i like i told you before that this is the only thing which could happen so that's a major thing which you can find that people will themselves offer you help they will do something for you and then in return they will ask for money or for or some tip i think this should be fine for some people some people might not like it so it's a personal choice altogether but still to be for your own safety make sure if someone is very keen to help you beware of those people and do not trust anyone if you know that person personally or from before and if someone is asking you to go to some place do not go with them you never know so you cannot be blind and you cannot be trusting anyone with any of the thoughts whatsoever do your own research before going to a place i will be also coming up with videos where you can go and what you can do also especially when you are going to tombs in the valley of kings some people can offer you like you know the restricted areas are there and they can say i can make you go inside the restricted area and then i can click your pictures there don't do that so and keep take care of your belongings as you would normally do in any other place so be aware of your uh, surroundings all the time and i think it should be fine for you traveling in egypt and once again these things were actually prevalent in historic cities like cairo luxor etc but when we went to sharm el sheikh we did not feel any of such thing the place was absolutely modern and honestly overall egypt people are very very polite very humble and it's a really beautiful country to explore so that's all from my side for today and if you think i helped you in any way in planning your egypt trip then do give this video a thumbs up and share with others who are planning to travel to egypt also let me know any suggestions you have for me any questions you have for me in the comment section i will reply to them and thank you so much for watching see you in the next one bye bye take care